Kyle Shanahan just revealed in his post-game press conference that Ricky Pearsall has a subluxed shoulder. It's an injury he initially suffered his junior year in college, so it was an issue for him before the Niners drafted him. They knew it. He re-aggravated it in OTAs, and then again a few weeks ago, Kyle Shanahan in his press conference downplayed the injury and made it seem like it's an injury a lot of players have had, and it's no big deal, but that sounds like something someone who drafted Ricky Pearsall in the first round would say. Like, oh yeah, like it's no big deal. Well, apparently it is. Apparently, if it's a severe uh, subluxed shoulder, it could take months to heal, and clearly it has already taken months to heal. So that's the not so good. Oh, there's more not so good news. Leonard Floyd and Yeter Gross Matos both left the game with uh, scary looking knee injuries. I doesn't seem like either one needs surgery, but not exactly what you want from the thinnest position on the team. Because without those two guys, the Niners defensive ends are Nick Bosa. And that's it. There's also Robert Beal Jr. who could make the team just because he technically plays that position, but he's not necess- he's not one of their best 53 players. So that's the bad news. The good news is that Jordan freaking Mason is an incredible player. He's a monster. And if anything were to happen to Christian McCaffrey, he's 28 years old. He's had a ton of touches in his career. He just led the league in touches last year. The Niners have a not just a starting caliber running back, a good starting running back as the backup. Jordan Mason really could save the Niners season this season. (laughs) <laughs> if anything were to happen to McCaffrey. So that's great news. Also, Cam Latu caught three passes. Wow, he's going to make the team. And then Jacob Cowing, uh, another touchdown catch. Brock Purdy, another interception. He's just thrown a bunch of them this offseason. This one was sort of a forced pass to Debo Samuel, who really ran a poor slant route and wasn't open. But Brock Purdy predetermined the throw and fired it in there anyway. And it was a little high and a little behind um, the wide back who wasn't open. And it was tipped by the corner and intercepted by the safety. So sort of continuing the pattern of Brock Purdy's offseason. And uh, the game ended in a 24-24 tie at 10 o'clock on a Friday night, which is really what all of us get for watching preseason football. 